let us commence with portfolios. So y'all can see my screen, right? Yep. Everyone can see this? Yes. Okay, excellent. So I wanna start by saying a caveat that I am by no means, I am by no means a portfolio expert, okay? What I'm gonna share with you today are the things that I know about portfolios and how this can help you framing around how to build something that's strong and effective, right? The people who are the subject matter experts in portfolios are obviously the wonderful pedagogy of team photography at City College, Stephanie Williamson, and also think about all of the other subject matter experts that are industry driven. So the people who are doing this work right now, either casually or intensely. This is that tribe, this is that community, the Sangha that I was referring to earlier, right? I'm part of this and I'm gonna be saying some, sharing some information that I have. You may go and speak with someone else who may say something that completely contradicts what I have to say. And that's fair. It is my intention that you think about what serves you. What makes you proud to talk about your portfolio? What makes you happy and secure when it comes to talking about this work? Does that make sense? All right, cool. So things I know about portfolio. Number one, the content needs to be organized in some way, shape or form. Right? So you need to have categories. The categories can be based on anything you like. It can be based on subject matter. It can be based on style of photography. It can be based on software. Right? The idea is that I, as someone who comes to your website, it should take me no more than three clicks to see what I want to see. So I arrive at the splash page. I click on a category and then I get to see a photo. Organization is super important. Whenever, whenever either an employer, a gallery owner, someone who's curating an exhibit wants to see your work, the easier you can make it for them, the better. So having everything kind of like barfed out on one like splash screen does not serve. Be very strategic about curating and organizing your content in a way that makes sense. Next, content itself. So a lot of you are not necessarily attached to a specific job goal. Some of you are. I invite you to reflect upon what is your intention and objective with your portfolio, with your photography skills. So for those of you, for example, who are trying to get paid doing architecture photography, the majority of your portfolio should have architecture content. The content in the portfolio should match the content you want to get paid or recognized for making. And for some that can be challenging. For if you're someone like Yolanda, who's like, I just want my work to be seen. That's wonderful. I invite you though, to think strategically about where do you want it to be seen? Who do you want to see it? And use kind of those kind of criterions to curate what goes in your portfolio. Because I know a lot of you have thousands upon thousands okay. upon thousands of photographs and you need to choose, okay, what's going to serve best based on my objective. If that's sometimes unclear, that's why I highly, highly encourage you to connect with industry professionals who are on a further along the path that you are traveling to ask them questions, to learn more. Sometimes this content can also serve as the categories in your organization as well. 
One thing I will say about content that I've observed in the market right now at that some of the very popular and most lucrative forms of photography are people focused. So those are headshots, weddings, memorials, and then also architecture in and of itself. So I think architecture and real estate, right? Those are extremely, extremely hot and lucrative markets right now. So those of you who are interested in that, you're already on the path. And I don't see that necessarily dwindling anytime soon for, as I understand it right now, home prices are going up because there is a low supply of houses on the market due to the pandemic. And then lastly is product photography. So those are, you know, um, I'm a chocolatier. I made this really delicious chocolate. And now I need to take photos of it for my website, for my email newsletter, for my social media accounts. And I need someone who knows how to do that. So product photography, and that can be food and non-food. A lot of clients are asking me, what do I think is gonna happen after this pandemic is over? And what I personally believe is if a quarter of the country is out of work. This is an opportunity for everybody to push the reset button on their careers. A lot of people are gonna start their own small businesses. And when they do, they're gonna need marketing collateral. So that's where my clients come in. They're all gonna need video. They're all gonna need audio. They're all gonna need web designs. They're all gonna need graphic design. And guess what? they're really going to need photography. Mm -hmm. So recognize that your skill sets are going to be in demand and they are still in demand. And no matter what anyone tells you, they are always going to be in demand. Unfortunately, our society doesn't necessarily and explicitly see and value the work that you're doing right now, but you better believe the second there was nothing to see or hear, photography, video-wise, they'd be wondering what the hell's going on. So I remind you and encourage you to stay on this path no matter what the market or industry experts say. This work is super important, it's super valuable, and it's very hot in the market. It may not be explicit, just recognize though that what you do is always going to be in style. So that's what I wanted to say about content. And then lastly, process. Process is ultimately telling the story of how you did what you did. This is your opportunity to demonstrate your technical competence. In the job search world, there are four C's, competence, culture, chemistry, and compensation. Competence is, can you do the job? So you need to communicate in your website and in each individual project that you can do the job. With photography, this can be a touch challenging because you don't necessarily have a moving or vibrant dynamic product to show. You only really get to show the finished product. So, some invitations that I make for photography clients are as follows. If you're going to focus on architecture, people focused, it might serve you to do a before and after side by side, right? So let's say you do a, a headshot of me and you know, you're the, you have the before photo, right? And it's like me, I'm very sweaty. My forehead's glistening. Uh, I've got crazy hair on my face. You can see the follicles on my face because you're using this like really amazing DSLR cameras that like showcase every single in, in nook and cranny of my face, <laughs> right? That's the before. And then when you put it side by side with the after, we can see what your magic looks like when you do photo retouching and editing. And then a little 
two or three sentences below the side by side explaining what you did, why you did it, why did Aria come to you for services, what's Aria's story, and then maybe you get a quote from your client to kind of talk about how satisfied I was with this product. So that would be an example of process. You can do this with the people, you can do this with products, you can do this with food, right? That's how I invite you to do the process part. Now, that doesn't mean that your entire portfolio should just have before and after photos. There is definitely something to be said about, you know, when I come to your splash page, just a really, really powerful and arresting image, right? So think an example of one of Vince's children in the Congo camps, right? Or one of Henry's skylines, right? Just be strategic and curate when you are going to showcase process and when you're not going to showcase process. Does anybody have any questions about organization, content, or process before we move forward? Um, I got a question. Please. Uh, what what does it, what does it mean? Uh, what does what does it mean if you, uh, it's, um, what do, what do you mean? Um, how uh, wait, uh, how do you how do you like uh, so if you want want to like, want portfolio want to be organized? Does it have to the, does does it have to be the, the content has to be the the same criteria? So if I may, I think you should strive to make sure the content is organized in some way, shape, or form, Henry. So either by subject matter. So that could be here are all my food projects, here are all my architecture projects, here are all my headshots, here are all my weddings. It could be based on software. So here are all my Capture One projects, here are all my Photoshop projects, here are all my Lightroom projects. It could be done based on anything really. Just again, the idea is if I'm someone who comes to your website, it should take me no more than three clicks to look at a project and understand. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay, wonderful. What other questions can I answer about organization, content, and process? Yes, Anna. Um, you had said the three C's. I got competence, but what were the other two? So there are four. four. Competence, culture, chemistry, and compensation. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about those, we're going to, it would come and work with me one-on-one -on -one and we'll dive a little bit deeper into those, okay? Or you can come to a workshop and we can talk about those too, okay? Thank you. You're very welcome. What other questions can I answer about organization, content, or process? I have um, one question. Please. Uh, the the um, wisdom I've often heard is that the splash page or home page, you should change it from time to time. It shouldn't be static. What, what do you think about that? I think that's a wonderful invitation. Mm -hmm. Nothing about our lives is static. Mm -hmm. So if you get a new shot, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Your portfolio should constantly be a work in progress. Mm -hmm. As you progress, as you level up, as you grow, the content in your portfolio should also be updated. Yeah, so you shouldn't have like the same splash page for <laughs> two years. <laughs> that is correct. Right. Okay, thank you. My pleasure, thank you for that addition. Does anybody have any other questions about organization, content, and process? Uh, I do, yeah, I do. Please, Yolanda. Um, I'm wondering <laughs> what advice you have for those of us here who are like not are retired and not looking for specific work and like I, a fine artist, like how would process, can you talk about process in that light? Sure. The way I see it is. I have the same question, Yolanda. The way I see it is you're going to take a raw photo of something right? And then you're going to manipulate it in some way, shape, or form, either via software or some lighting, a finished product. Just place them side by side and then have an artist statement below it. 
just kind of explaining what was your intention? What was your objective? How does this image resonate with you? What do you want the viewer to take? Okay. Was that helpful? Yeah. Uh, what was my intention? What do I want the viewer to take from this? Yeah. What, why did you do this project? What resonates with you? Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you. Any other questions about organization, content, or process? Okay. So the remaining part is projects. And it is my assumption that if you're in the Photography 130 class, you have already a great deal of projects to showcase in a portfolio. I invite you just to think about again, what are my intentions and objectives with this portfolio? And make sure that those projects are in there. The last piece in a portfolio would simply be an about me section that has a nice photo of yourself, a little background about you, why you do photography, and a place for someone to contact you. So either a contact form or a work email. I invite you to please create a work photography email so people are not hitting you up on your personal email. Do not put your phone number in there, right? Create it as a safe container for you to be able to filter who communicates with you and how they communicate with you. This is also an opportunity for someone to learn a little bit more about you to connect with you as a human being. The work that you do is very visceral and is very focused on the human experience in one way, shape or form. Either the way we engage with other humans, the way we engage with our environment, or the way we engage with 3D things. So use it as an opportunity to connect with someone who comes to your website. So that's the majority of my knowledge about portfolios. Does anybody have any questions about anything I've talked about in regards to portfolios so far? What, uh, Aria? Yes, Yolanda. You, you said early on, I'm sorry, I missed it. The content in a portfolio should match with the... So I was inviting those who are trying to get paid with their portfolio, trying to find opportunities. The content in the portfolio should closely as match your objective with the portfolio. For so those who are trying to get paid doing architecture work or shoot weddings, the majority of the portfolio should contain architecture images or weddings, right? For you as a fine artist, I would love to see a whole bunch of fine art. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. What other questions can I answer about portfolio? Hey, Aria, it's Vince. Um, on that topic of fine art, right? So when I was putting my website up, I had originally said, you know, Vince Thomas, you know, fine art photography, whatever. Um, how, how presumptuous does that sound when you sort of label yourself a fine art photographer? Is that off-putting? to people, should it just be a generic photographer or photography in terms of how you're positioning the work that you do? Because I took the fine art off of it because I think that's up to the viewer to determine whether they think it's fine or art or both or neither. Um, but I'm just wondering, am I overthinking that? Well, I personally am of the mindset that beauty is subjective, right? So we're never gonna know what's going on in the mind of the audience. You will probably know what's going on in the mind of the quote unquote gatekeepers, right? Because they're gatekeepers and it's their job. My invitation to you, Vince, is to ask yourself and consider yourself, are you a fine artist? When you do this work, do you feel as if you have created fine art? Because the only person who can truly answer that question at the end of the day is you. And I find that what this shows me is that you really care deeply about your craft. And it also is just another data point in this trend that I'm observing amongst creative professionals of perfection. 
we are conditioned to drive towards perfection and results. And this hinders us, paralyzes us even at times to move forward towards the things that we're seeking. And I don't blame any of our pedagogues for that because that is something that they've been conditioned. They've been focusing on results. They've been taught perfection, perfection, perfection. And I invite you to reframe the thinking around the work that you do. I invite you to just do your very best in the present moment and then let go of expectations of results. Why? Because you'll be in flow sooner Number two, you're going to get feedback on any piece of work that you do one way, shape, or form. Either you're going to seek it out or you're going to share it with a gatekeeper. You're going to get the feedback anyway. So thirdly, you might as well relax, release, and return to your intention of why am I doing this project, coming into the present moment. And I also want to be clear, I see this across all the disciplines, all the disciplines, even in my own personal craft of music. I'm trying to transmute an experience or an emotion or a feeling into a chord progression on the bass. And every time I try to sit and be like, okay, I'm writing a song about this COVID shenanigans, right? I can't, I can't make anything happen because I'm too focused on the outcome. Versus, I need to sit down in front of the bass and just see what comes out and then attach it to a meaning act. So that's just my personal perspective. You can take the invitation if you'd like, but that's just me. No, that's great stuff. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions about portfolios before we shift into LinkedIn? Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm.